Let your light shine before others, so that you may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of God. Yeah. Right. In fact, we were planning this for like just two or three weeks ago only, all right? And I think that this is a very good uh, opportunity for the youth to be able to hear, uh, I mean for us to hear the youth and then later on we'll be praying for them and we'll also be inviting a youth leader uh, to pray for the church on behalf of the youth. I think that there is that mutual uh, sense of praying for one another that we can do later, all right? And so, um, in the, Due to time, uh, I'm going to be very quick, all right, in what I'm going to be sharing today. I think it is nothing new being sought and light, but I'd like just to highlight certain uh, aspects, okay? Uh, come, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we give thanks to you for this time. Uh, we pray and ask the God that you continue to watch over us, continue to help us grow, continue to help us uh, uh, be uh, that sought and light that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today is Youth Sunday, all right, as you all already can see, okay, all right, this was a fairly last-minute decision. Uh, I was told that there was youth gifts to be given out later, so in order to disguise myself as a youth, I decided to wear the youth t-shirt so that I can qualify for the gift. But anyway, uh, for the youth topic, all right, obviously it is uh, something that is still uh, relevant to all of us, okay, so don't switch off. Well, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 34 verse 8. Now, we ourselves as Christians have uh, tasted and seen that the Lord is good. But my question now is how do others taste and see that the Lord is good through our lives? So, uh, when, one way we can say that, yeah, come to church, come to church, you know, come to church and people can taste and see that the Lord is good. I mean, St. Kang Methodist Church uh, is blessed, all right, with this uh, good frontage. We are at the junction of the traffic. You know, uh, we've got this cross, we've got all these banners, etc., etc. You know, uh, we've got a, a, a website, church centre app. Uh, is this, are these things enough? Are all these enough to uh, uh, gather people in and, and to be sought and light to them, you know, through their contact with us in the church? Do you all think that that is enough? No, I see some shaking heads, huh? No, I don't think that that's enough. All right, because if that was enough, then Coca-Cola would not need to have uh, 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 dispensers all around. They would just need to put banners and advertisement at their headquarters and that would be enough. All right? right? It's a very logical understanding that for marketing, we need to stretch our network out as much as possible to reach out to everyone. All right? Now, since its beginning, uh, Coca-Cola has built its business on using these three core values being acceptable, being affordable, and being available, all right? And that is their um, uh, uh, core values in making this simple drink to be so successfully quenching the thirst of over 8 billion people in the world. Now, if a simple drink of Coca-Cola can so successfully quench an earthly thirst, an earthly thirst, how much more should the spiritual thirst be quenched with the fountain of living water that is found in Christ and Christ alone. You know, well, it is all well and good for people to be able to walk into church to quench their thirst, all right, uh, as what is seen there, enjoy Jesus Christ and thou shalt never thirst. All right, Jesus is more than acceptable. All right, our testimonies, the sharing that we should, by the way, just now, uh, Kaylin, if you are looking for me as your mentor, just come and talk to me. All right, but if I'm in your list, that is. <laughs> I won't say no, okay? <laughs> All right, but in any case, you know, uh, the testimonies, we are more than, uh, Jesus is more than acceptable. All right? He is more than affordable because he's free. All right? Jesus, the gospel story is free. And he's more than available because he is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And so if Coca-Cola can go on these three core principles, in order to make the, uh, uh, to bring forth the network of uh, uh, quenching earthly thirst, how much more must we as Christians to be that sort and light to bring forth this message to quench spiritual thirst? 
Now, research was conducted and it is reported that the second highest conversion rate age, all right, the second highest conversion rate age is at which level? Is it for the seniors' age, the children's age, the youth age? Anyone would like to hazard a guess? Which age? Youth, you're right, okay? The highest hit rate are the children, all right? And when they hit until around 14, 15, that's the second highest uh, conversion rate. People coming to know Christ before they reach 18 years old. And my question is, do we see this happening in youth ministries across Methodist churches? I'm not sure, lah, uh, but in Sengkang Methodist Church, I think that this is something we must continue to grow in. All right, just now we have heard Jedediah sharing that uh, you were a part of the organizing committee for last year's uh, Christmas program, right? And many of the youths came to be dedicated, right? Yeah, so these are things that we must continue to celebrate. These are things that as a youth ministry, that as a church, that we must work alongside with the youths to reach out to those who have yet to hear the gospel message. All right, and therefore, youths have a big impact, but the church also has a great impact in impacting the youth and together we work as one body. All right, so remember, we all are the sword and the light. All right, and so very quickly, let me just go into the functions of what sword and light are. All right, and just to give us some uh, uh, spiritual reminders. First of all, Jesus says that we are the sword and the light. He's not saying that you are going to become. He's not saying that you will one day become. He says that you are and what does you are mean? You are means you are. All right. Are you human? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You are means you are. All right. And therefore, when Jesus says that you are the sword and light, you are. That's your identity. All right. That's your undeniable identity that is in Christ. You are already a sword. All right. And what does the sword do? The sword flavors. All right. Uh, I, I know as uh, age comes, you know, we should cut down on sword. But nevertheless, sword flavors, all right, salt flavors, okay, and therefore if you have tasted how good Jesus is, if you have tasted how good God is, all right, and that is what it is, have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and as Christians, we must have tasted how God, how good God is, all right, and that is something that we must continue to be, that salt that flavors, that brings that distinct flavor of Christ to others. Okay. Next, salt preserves. All right, salt preserves. As we all know, all right, salt in, is one of the earliest preservatives. Uh, it was a valued commodity in the ancient world uh, without any source of refrigeration. Uh, and therefore, they rubbed salt over uh, meat uh, to, 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 to preserve it for, for, for long time use. Okay. Um, let me just run very quickly. And therefore, when we talk about salt as a preservative, when we talk about salt as a preservative, what we are saying is that Christ illustrates us to be like salt. It is an illustration that we are to bring life, all right, into the decay, into the hopelessness of life. Salt that brings life to something that is going to be decayed, all right? Next, salt brings, creates thirst. All right, often when we talk about salt, all right, we easily think of salt being just a preservative or just bringing flavor. But I suggest that an interesting effect that salt brings is that it makes us thirsty. Too much salt makes us thirsty. All right, and therefore, do we also as Christians, are we making people thirsty for the spiritual truth? to quench their spiritual thirst. Are we so salty to the point that people are wondering, wow, I really thirst after this thing that you're talking about, this God that you're talking about, this, 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 this person that is so, so gracious, so loving, and so powerful and so good. And therefore, these are some of the uh, 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 physical characteristics of salt. I would like to introduce another uh, um, significance of salt. There is a spiritual significance to salt. Back then, in the past, in ancient society, salt was used as a bond of peace, a bond of friendship. All right? uh, some of them, um, when they would go into a business deal, 
all right, they would pass sword amongst one another to seal the deal. And out of this idea grew the concept of the sword covenant found in 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 5, where God speaks of a covenant of sword made with David. And I quote, Don't you know that the Lord, the God of Israel, has given the, given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a covenant of sword? All right? And so, likewise, sword could very well mean that, 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 that being a sword of of Christ is that we are like that covenant link, okay? That's uh, not that we take the place of Christ, all right? Uh, but we are the ones that form the bridge of that agreement, bringing the loss to Christ, okay? And so that's the sense of covenantal bond. Let us move on to light, okay? What does the light do? Light obviously guides us, right? Okay, I will not go into details of it. It's common sense, okay? Uh, I remember when I was driving... This is not, uh, I just found a GIF. Uh. Okay, when I was driving... <laughs> all right, and we were driving in Australia, all right, uh, and we, were dri we, we drove three hours, okay, from Perth, and we went to the Pinnacles. Uh, I believe it was just uh, uh, some sand formation uh, uh, in the desert area, something like that, I, I vaguely remember. And we were driving, and when we reached there, we were, we were driving back to Perth, it was another three hours. Uh, and it was really so dark, you know, uh, it's not like in Singapore, there are many street lamps and stuff like that, and it was so dark, and we were just guided basically by our headlights. It was pitch dark. All right, therefore, light guides us. All right, light also guides others as we shine the light to guide others to Christ. Light also warns us of danger that is coming. Well, this is something that is understandable, like a lighthouse that is placed to warn others of the danger. And therefore, as light, the world, we are to warn the world of the dangers of the world by shining that light. And finally, light also reveals all right, um, when my son, Zachary, was younger, um, he very lazy to brush his teeth properly. Like, you know, when children, like, when they brush, like, it's just put in the mouth, and they just suck one side, and they just like, oh, just like, like that, pattern, pattern like that a bit, right? Okay, or maybe it's just my children. Uh, okay, but in any case, my wife took a responsibility to make sure that he brushed his teeth properly. And not only does he brush his teeth properly, she makes sure every night is a routine before he sleeps, that he will lay down on her lap and she would use this uh, dental uh, mirror, you know, and this, uh, I don't know, this pick or something like that, you know, and start picking all the, the, the in between his teeth, you know, and, and get out all the food and, 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 and things like that. And so she would sometimes like, Andy, Andy, uh, come, uh, shine the light, shine the light, you know, like that, wow, shine, shine, shine. Then I thought, wow, very tiring every time, like, shine, shine, shine. I said, I just buy those dental mirror uh, that has light shining already, la, right? Okay, la, so it worked. La, huh? Okay, but what I'm going to say is that light reveals the light reveals the crevices, the wrongs, the lacks of this world in terms of spiritual and uh, uh, moral matters, all right? And so, sword and light. And I'd like to pose us a question. When Jesus says that we are the sword and light, again, I remind us that we are already dead. Okay, it is in the present tense signifying that we are the sword and light in this spiritually dark world. Okay, and therefore I ask this question can sword, all right, can sword become unsalty? Can or not? Those who are in science, can or not? No? How do you make salt unsalty? <laughs> Ay yeah, yeah, lo, ay yeah, right. <laughs> all right. How do we make salt unsalty? Okay, for the sake of time. All right. Uh, actually, salt, being sodium chloride, is a very, very stable composition, not easily broken up. Okay. So, on how to make salt unsalty, you just have to keep diluting more and more of it in water. Correct. Ah, wow. Well, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Preparing for O levels, is it? Okay. <laughs> as long as water is continually added into salt, it will slowly lose its saltiness. So as long as Christ's likeness and all the characteristics of Christ 
is diluted in our lives, we can become unsalty salt. You are the salt, of, but you can become unsalty. All right? And uh, another interesting way that uh, salt can lose its saltiness can be found in some of the ancient customs. All right? So, for example, back then, uh, the Roman soldiers, uh, salt was a valuable commodity, you know, uh, and it was used in barter. So, it was like, do you all know the word salary comes from the word salt? You know, wow, Keegan, amazing. All right, the Latin word of salt is salarium, all right, which means salt payment. So every month you are being paid in salt. Ah. So every time you get your paycheck, ah, you say, I am getting my salt payment. I'm reminded to be a salt of the world, ah. salt and light for Christ. Okay, remember or not? Okay, those who don't get uh, salary, get allowance, also can. Ah. Okay. All right, <laughs> just remember. All right, the word uh, salary is taken from the Latin word salarium. Okay, and back then, if someone was lacking integrity, okay, he would mix white sand with salt, you know, for the weight. All right, and then when sand is mixed with salt as payment, all right, obviously it loses some of its salty quality. Lah, huh? Okay. And so, therefore, is we, if we look at it, we are the salt uh, of the earth. And therefore, we can lose our saltiness if we are diluted or if we are kind of mixed up, all right, with other sediments, other kind of, uh, 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 like sand, okay? So, the more we compromise, the more the world comes into us, the more we become like the sand on the earth rather than the salt. Okay, finally, we will compromise to the point that we just totally become no more salt. Okay? So hearing all this, we should not be fearful of being in contact with the world. All right? We should not. You know, a pastor once challenged his congregation. He says that this sanctuary or this church can either be a salt shaker, all right? And you can come here once a week. You are in this salt shaker building. All right? And you can have a lot of fellowship with other sort. And you think that your job is accomplished. But instead, what God wants you is to pick up this salt shaker, this church, and to shake you out all over the city, all over the world. God has brought us together to be His salt to scatter us. He wants us to be an influence for Christ. Salt sitting in a salt shaker will never exert its effect until it is shaken. All right, into a decaying world. Now, as A.T. Pearson says, we are not responsible for conversion, but we are responsible for contact. We are not responsible for conversion, but we are responsible for contact. You know, um, back then, I remember when I was in Poly, um, I, I, I was still not yet a, a okay, la, slash and slash Christian. Okay? And I will always make fun and joke about my Christian. Just now, who was sharing here that he very scared to... Is it Nathan? Where's Nathan? Nathan, you were sharing something like you, you, you don't want to be those uh, uh, crazy Christians or something like that, right? Uh, don't want to be identified, right? Yeah. All right. And in my polytechnic, uh, there were all these Christian schoolmates. Uh, deep inside, I will always joke about them. Uh, so I'll make fun of them, uh, okay? Because they are very different. They are very different. Uh, this lifestyle that makes me wonder, you know, why are you so holy? Uh? Acting only, is it? Okay, let me tell you something. You know, back then, uh, I like to play street soccer. So when I go to Nanyang Poly, back then Nanyang Poly, okay, it was in Ishu campus. Last time, last time Nanyang Poly was five campuses, one, okay? So I was at Ishu campus. So at Ishu campus, right, I would just go, I don't want to go for the lectures, I don't want to go for the, the classes, but they had those ID cards. So you just scan attendance. So I'll just pass my ID card to someone who's willing to take my ID card and scan for me. Lah. All right, don't learn from me, okay? Hello, okay? <laughs> and then I'll go, what, during those lectures, what I'll do, I'll just go down and play street soccer, lah, all right, with, uh, at the street soccer court. All right, and then I'll ask, hey, help me scan it, help me scan it. I tell you, when I ask those Christians, ah, no point asking one. Ah. Okay, they won't help me. Ah. Then I say, well, you're all so holy, you're so holy for what? Uh, only those naughtier one or those sit on the fence, okay, lah, okay, lah, help you. Lah, you know, kind of, all these Christians are ah, goody, goody, two shoes. Ah. You know, but, back, but, but deep inside, I tell you, I really pay full harm, you know. Yeah, yeah, really, seriously. I really have the sense of respect. Uh, although at that point of time, it wasn't really respect. La. But really, deep inside, I felt like, wow, you guys are a bit different. La. Okay? 
Um, so do not shy away from living out kingdom values. Uh, use wherever you are. Don't shy away. Don't shy away. All right. There is an effect one because it said it had an effect on me. All right. Maybe years later lah, but it still had an effect. Okay. <laughs> but the uh, and and the Bible has already warned us that the world will hate us. The world will hate us. Okay. When we live a life that is impactful for Christ. When you're out there, you know when you get a wound, uh, Jedediah, when you get a wound, right, if I pour salt on it, right, pain or not? Is it suffering or not? But does it heal faster? It does, obviously. <laughs> it kills, it disinfects, and everything. It's painful, right? And therefore, by living as a testimony, it will be painful, all right? It will be painful. There will be some sense of pain. There will be something. But actually, in the long run, you are doing good. Okay, so do not be compromised, all right? And therefore, make that commitment that I'm not going to be going around being an unsalty sort, all right? Uh, for you science people here, maybe you will nitpick a bit on what I'm saying here, but I think you'll get the idea, all right? Okay, let's talk about light. Can you be a hidden light, all right? Can you be a ninja Christian? You know what's a ninja Christian? A uh, ninja Christian means you're Christian, but then you're ninja, huh? Ninja, okay. All right, uh, I think I better be a bit quicker here. All right, and so basically what this means is that um, uh, uh, basically don't want people to know that you are Christian, ah, right? Okay, and I think that a lot of times, uh, like uh, I remember when I went to, uh, sorry, when I went to Office Alpha, you know, I, I was leading Office Alpha in Harbourfront, uh, 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 the offices over there, uh, and, 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 and the office people will kind of tell me, say, wow, I tell you, uh, Pastor, very hard to find volunteers, you know. Very hard to find volunteers to, to uh, and it's always the same few people. I say, come on, you got to ask more people to the Christians in your office. And I say, they don't want to be known as Christians. Then the moment they serve in Alpha, everybody know they are Christians. I say, what serious ah? So hard man. I say, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and one of the things that they are worried to be known as a Christian in the workplace is that people will start to ostracize them lah. Or their, their, their values, you know, their values of, of, of how they handle work, how they handle their colleagues, you know, uh, they don't want to be like judge lah, you know, so that they can be a bit more maybe ninja one, you know. Then when they come to church, uh, take off the ninja shirt, okay, hello, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then after they go back to work, wear ninja again. You know, I'm not a Christian anymore, you know, so I can do all the dark arts, throw your sharinken, you know, uh, backstab you. Uh, that kind of thing. All right, and say, uh, and, and these are ninja Christians. All right, um, I, I remember someone sharing with me, a marketplace leader, he was sharing uh, in, in this conference and he was saying that, you know, don't be afraid to stand up to, for Christ. Don't be afraid. Sometimes even if it uh, rubs against uh, what the core values of the company may be doing, I tell you, believe in God. I really don't have the time now, but I, I would love to share more testimonies. But basically, long story short, uh, God redeemed this person, all right? Even though at the point of time, it looked like it was uh, doomsday for this person because he was standing up against the values of the company, but in the end, he got promoted. But anyway, long story short. Okay, I was in the army. I was in the army. Obviously, okay, all of us guys in the army. All right, I was in the army, and and back then I had a platoon. Okay, so I was a platoon commander, and back then uh, in the when I was in the army, I I I rededicated my life to Christ, and wow, I was on fire for God, man. I tell you, I was on fire, man. You know, I, I remember sharing with you guys that I told my platoon, I said, no swearing. All right, anyone who swears will get punishment. All right, then I told you all what happened, right? What did they do? They changed the swear word to something else, lah. So instead of they like that uh, they change to another syllable lah. Okay, uh, they, no uh, no swearing what? Oh well, I'll tell you all these people. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so I remember that I was an officer. All right, that, and we had an officers bunk. And the officers bunk, there's there's alcohol. All right, okay. And then they will say, okay la, come Andy, let's go. Uh, then I tell you, no no, I don't want to go. You know, I don't want to go. You know, no, I didn't do that lah. Okay, but you all understand why? In my heart, right, I'm like. No, no, I'm, I'm the holy one, you know, I don't want to go. Then they always look at me and say, wow, you, you Christian, uh, like, like very up market like that. Uh. You know, like, uh, uh, what, what's, that, what's that term? Uh, heavenly purpose, no earthly use or something like that. Uh, something like that, uh, okay. Uh, are too heavily minded with no earthly use anymore. Uh, okay. And I tell you, if I can go back to those days, uh, I'll join them. But I won't drink. I'll just join them. I'll just join them to be there, to mingle with them, to form the relationships. 
but I'll still make a stand not to drink. I mean, you don't need to drink to form relationships, right? But back then, I think still immature and like very on fire, like wow, everything is black and white only, that kind of thing. But that's what I'm trying to say here is that, all right, don't be isolated, don't be hidden, don't be afraid to let people know that you're Christian, live out the values, but yet don't be worried to be in contact and be seen with them. Don't be worried, okay? It doesn't mean that we must be a light that is like a chandelier. You know a chandelier are lights that are gathered together while look very pretty. Very, yes, obviously, very nice, okay? But then they are not out in the world. They are not shining bright enough. But we, have we become a chandelier, clumped together just to look nice and nice only? Do not hide, shine for Christ. Do not be ashamed of the Lord. Do not be ashamed to be sought and light and to be identified as a Christian. So church, in conclusion, we have seen what it means to be sought. We have seen what it means to be light. However, if we compromise and we dilute the Christ that is in our lives, we may lose our saltiness. We will lose the way that we shine our light. Okay? And sometimes we may be hiding. We don't want people to know. Jesus says that we are. Do not be hidden. Remember, when Jesus said in the passage, he says that you are not a light that is hidden under a bowl. He didn't say you are not a light that is extinguished. There's a difference, huh? You are not a light that is hidden under a bowl. Okay? But I'm still Andy, right? Doesn't mean Andy ceases to exist. It's just that he's hidden, right? So what Jesus is saying here is that you are already a light, but don't be hidden under a bowl. He didn't say that you cease to become a light. So don't. Who you are is your sword and light. Don't hide yourself. But there's sometimes another way of hiding ourselves. You know a light bulb. A light bulb, it can be shining light, but it's not shining light properly. How? Why? Because the surface is dirty. There's grime. There's dirt. Right? And it impedes the effectiveness of light. And so, therefore, just as salt can be compromised, light can also be compromised if there is grime, there is dirt, all right, on the surface. All right. So, therefore, church, let us remember to always rely on God, come back to Christ, come back to the value system, have accountability. Just now, the word here was accountability. Because a lot of times, the light say, I'm shining, well, I'm shining, well, I'm shining very brightly already. But then you don't see that there's grime. There's dirt. And that's where people outside can see for you and say that, hey, brother, sister, I think this area I need to clean a bit more. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You need to clean a bit more and, and stuff like that. We need that sense of account. We need that community. And therefore, being a Christian is not to be an individual person following an individual God and doing this individual faith. It is a community, and it is a community across ages. We must understand that we all have something to offer, regardless of our age. And that's why this Youth Sunday is so important to remind us of the fact that youths are important, adults are important, we are all sought and light together. Alright, and we are together in this sort shaker called Sengkang Methodist Church. And when we go out, we are going to be spread out to be in contact to the rest of the world, wherever we are, wherever God has placed us. So church, even as we come together, I'd like to just end off this time with a time of prayer. I'd like to now just, uh, can I have the final slide? Okay. Church, can we, can, can, can we do this? Um, I, I really feel that we want to take this opportunity to pray for our youths. And then later on, I'll invite Stacy, who's our youth uh, ministry uh, representative, to come up and to represent the youth body to pray for the church. All right? And so, youths, wherever you are, can you just make a stand? Can you just stand? And we just want to pray for you. We want to, as a church, to just stretch our hands wherever you are. Whether you are wearing this T-shirt or not, okay, stand up one, okay? Not say wear this T-shirt, then you can stand up one. As long as you are youth, all right? Stand up, okay, or wherever you are, all right, okay. Okay, all right, church, can we just pray for our youths? 
Can we just pray for our youth? And these are some of the pointers. Let us come together. Let us just pray for our youth. Cover them in prayers. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, we give thanks to you for our youths. We thank you, Lord, for who they are. We thank you, Lord, for bringing them as gifts. Indeed, Lord, they are to be celebrated. They are not challenges to be conquered. They are not problems. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this Sunday where, Lord, they can share their story, where, Lord, we can hear from them, where, Lord, we can understand them better. Lord, we pray that, God, you give them that spiritual heart, a change of heart to turn to the Lord, to turn to the Lord and to learn to trust in Him, to learn to trust in Him, Lord. And God, I pray that, Lord, that they will indeed be convicted of the need for our Lord Jesus in their lives and that they will open the spiritual eyes, Lord, to see that indeed the Lord is good. Lord, we also pray that, God, that they will, each and every one of them, be bold and courageous to lift out their identity as salt and light. That, God, that they will, Lord, have that spiritual discernment. Lord, just now you have heard the prayers that sometimes they do not know where to go, how to discern and know the voice of God. But, Lord, you have spoken to David when he was a young boy. You have spoken to Samuel. Lord, you have spoken to people who are young and you have said, let those, the children, come to me. Lord, your voice is always to us, even to the young. You will speak to them. Lord, I pray and ask that you help them to discern your voice through the community of faith, through the discernment, Lord, of the Spirit, through the reading of your word, Lord. They will hear your voice and they will spiritually have that wisdom to make right decisions that pleases the Lord and the faithfulness, Lord, to keep in it. Church, the verse Malachi down there says, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Church, we are their fathers. We are their mothers. We are their spiritual guardians. These are gifts. They are gifts. They are to be nurtured, loved, and cared for, and to be guided. Turn our hearts, Lord, once again, back to our youths, and turn the youths back to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Youths, remain standing. I'll invite Stacy. Stacy, you will lead us, uh, sorry, you will lead the youths in this session to just pray for the church. And now I'll close in prayer. Good morning. Um, yep, I'm Stacy, and I'll be leading uh, the prayers. Um, for the adults. Uh, I'll be praying in a first-person narrative, uh, even though it's a youth to pray, uh, to adult prayers, but because I'm an adult as well, so we'll pray in first narrative. All right? Come, let's um, bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the adults you have placed in Sengkang Methodist Church. We humbly come before you and lift ourselves to you. Remind us of the childlike faith we started with, Help us to make decisions with understanding and humility. Remind us that everything is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing you, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge your supreme authority and we ask that we would rightly appropriate your place in our lives. Free us from the bondage of brokenness and restore what has been damaged. We surrender our relationships to you, Lord. May you help us to find peace and healing in you so that we will heal from the generation trauma. We trust in your power to heal and redeem. Remind us, Lord, to love you and set our priorities straight in our lives. Help us to live our lives in ways that are pleasing to you. Let us live faithful lives that will exemplify this Christian life for the younger generation to come and to inspire them to live life faithful for you. We are forever grateful for your love and grace, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This part of time, can I invite the? Uh, uh, can we invite all of us to stand? I'd like to invite the worship team. I'm sorry, uh, Owen, last minute. 
All right, worship team, can you please come up and then maybe just lead us in a closing song. Uh, let us have the closing song of Alabaster Jar. Alabaster Jar. And then after that, uh, yeah. Okay, come. 